Hi YouTube, welcome back to this video where we're continuing our journey around Snowflake Cortex and that is the suite of products and services that Snowflake make available for you to be able to leverage machine learning models and large language models easily and effectively all within your Snowflake environment. Now so far in the series we've covered classification, anomaly detection and time series forecast and ML models which leaves one more and that's called the Contribution Explorer. Now the Contribution Explorer works in a little bit of a different way compared to the other free ML functions we've seen so far. Those ones require you to build and train a model first of all using historical data before passing new data to it so then it can provide those forecasts or classifications going forwards. The Contribution Explorer however requires you to pass in a data set and it will return an output which we'll discuss in a moment. So it works very much like a table function rather than a ML model. Also this function isn't called Contribution Explorer within Snowflake, it's actually called Top Insights and that's the function that we're going to look at in our demo. If you stay tuned later in this video we'll take a look at that. Now Contribution Explorer really excels at segmenting data based upon various dimensions to identify the root cause behind certain drivers or behaviors that you're seeing within your business. Now those dimensions could be categorical such as location or market segment or continuous like temperature or attendance. And that flexibility ensures that the Contribution Explorer can handle a wide range of diverse data sets while providing tailored insights to your business. And that approach really helps you to identify calls of these kind of problems within your organization by looking at shifts in the data concerning a certain metric, such as sales or such as fraudulent applications. This makes it easier than it would be manually to identify the root causes of changes and take targeted corrective action efficiently and promptly. And so how does it work? Well, to use and leverage Contribution Explorer within your queries and pipelines, you use that top insights table function within Snowflake. And that function takes the most important dimensions from within the data set that you've provided, it builds segments from those dimensions, and it detects which segments have influenced the metric in question the most, and then provides those insights back to you so you can take action off the back of that. So a common example might be sales analysis. Your business may have noticed a sudden drop off in sales impacting your revenue. In this example, you could use Contribution Explorer really quickly over your sales data to help identify what might be the driver behind that. And so in that scenario, what do you do? Well, there's four key steps. The first one is you prepare your data. So you get your sales data together to include those various dimensions such as location, salesperson, customer, and industry vertical. You then apply to Contribution Explorer, and that involves using that top insights table function within Snowflake. That will generate your insights and you should really store that output then to a table so you can analyze those findings and explore which of those dimensions, location, salesperson, customer, etc., are driving that revenue shortfall. Once you've identified those, the fourth and final step then is to take that corrective action within your business. And that could be something like providing additional training to underperforming salespeople or focusing marketing efforts in certain struggling regions. So let's get into a demo, and in this demo, we're gonna use Snowflake synthetic data functions to create a table of mortgage applications. And some of those mortgage applications are gonna be fraudulent. We're gonna use the Contribution Explorer to help identify which segments, which dimensions are driving those fraudulent applications. So I hope you find it useful. Hey, I just wanted to jump in real quick and let you know that enrollments for the Master and Snowflake program are currently open. It includes 10 in-depth expert level modules closely aligned with the SnowPro Advanced Architect and Data Engineer certifications, but crucially, it gives you real-world expert level advice and access to download my patterns and approaches I use with my enterprise skill customers. Check out the link in the video description below to apply. Let's get back to the video. Here we are in our Snowflake environment and I've used synthetic data to create our data set, created a table called mortgage applications. Notice I've used these functions to create things like first name, last name, date of birth, a city, and then I've also got different categories here of employed, self-employed and unemployed for the employment status as well as annual income, credit score, property value, and then I've also got a column which I'm gonna be using is our label. The thing that we wanna look at and predict is around fraud, fraudulent mortgage applications. So 
it's going to be true if it's a fraudulent application um, or false if it's a normal non-fraudulent application. So we're going to execute that command to create our data set with 100,000 records in there. Let's just take a quick look at that data. The top 10 records, we've got first and last name, we've got a date of birth, we've got a city, employment status, and the other columns. Then notice our fraudulent applications. We're gonna get quite a lot of them compared to some real world data just because of the nature and the way that I've generated this table, but it's purely for demonstration purposes. Now, over the top of this table, I'm gonna create a view called VW underscore mortgage applications. I'm just gonna pull out all the columns, but the reason why I'm doing this is I'm gonna show you how you could potentially prepare and bucket some of these attributes together to get a better, more accurate model at the end of this. And I'm taking the annual income and I'm simply grouping it into certain categories using this case statement and creating an additional column on here called annual income groupings. So I'm just gonna run that view and that's gonna create that. And that's what I'm gonna use as my input then into the top insights table function next. So if I scroll down here, I've got um, a credit replace table as, and I'm using a CTE within this then, where I'm using my top insights table function, which is down here. Before we get down here, let's just take a look at the inputs I'm creating. I've left credit score out for now because I think if I wanna use credit score at the moment in my mortgage applications, table, my credit score could be anything from zero to 1000. And I'd probably want to add that into my view with some grouping to kind of add those into certain buckets to make it more usable. So that's one way that you could extend this approach. For now, I've just left it out and I wanted to leave it there to show you what the approach might look like for that. Instead of taking the employment status, the annual income group and the property value group is dimensions that I'm gonna pass in to my table function. And then notice I've got this statement here because it needs to be provided um, as a Boolean data type for the label. I'm just saying if the fraud column is equal to one, then it's true, otherwise false. And that's getting passed in to my table function, top insights down here where I'm passing in all of my categorical dimensions in one go and any continuous dimensions as well. So I'm gonna execute that and that's gonna populate my table. Notes I've also got this over partition by zero clause and that ensures that the table input is processed together. So I've got my mortgage applications results table set up. Now in this case, I've ranked these results by the surprise column and I've limited it to the top 50. Now here's my results set. I've ordered it by the surprise column, which represents the amount by which the test metric in the segment exceeds its expected value based on, upon that metric change. So you can see here, for the employment status unemployed, I was expecting 11,132 applications, which were fraudulent, and I actually got 33,000. So the difference between the two is the surprise ranking. So what we're saying here is if the employment status is unemployed, that's a key driver behind the fraudulent mortgage applications we're seeing based upon this data set. And so essentially, I want to start looking into these employment status applications in more detail, potentially also introducing additional dimensions like the credit score before, so I can take some corrective action. This is just a sample data set, so notice that we're getting some strange results in terms of the annual income and employment status here. We've actually got a negative surprise because I'm getting um, the actuals far lower than the expected values, but you get the idea. You can pass in these dimensions. The contribution explorer using the top insights table function will take these individual dimensions, split them into segments, and give you an idea of where you should focus your efforts to take some corrective action. So that's it for our short demo. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos coming soon.